Gearbox casings and compressors. What does that mean to you? Um, do you know what they are? Do you know what they look like? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this uh, feature today here with Lee Scott from the Starag Group. Um, and specifically, Lee, you know, how they're made and the challenges um, in making them. But perhaps start with explaining, yeah, a, a, a gearbox housing and a compressor, okay, might sound obvious, but go into a bit of detail. It's a big topic, really, because you, you can start with um, small, sort of car sized components and you can move up to rail size components and, and wind turbines type of components. So wide range of materials, wide range of products and different types of solutions. And within a, let's take a gearbox casing, what is the, 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 the core exercise or the core activity within it when it comes to manufacturing? I mean, precision has to be critical, doesn't it here? Because of what's happening inside the gearbox to ensure, you know, reliability and longevity. It's absolutely critical. I mean, on the screen here, we're looking at high speed machining of small automotive parts in, in aluminium, very different to the large parts, but fundamentally, wherever you put a bore, there's a shaft going in that bore and a bearing and probably some gears that need to mesh behind that. So precision is absolutely critical. But of course, speed and cost per part are important as well. And you actually have a feature, an ultra precision package on some of your machines in order to really excel in these areas, don't you? We do, and particularly on the larger machines as well. So if, if we take the, uh, the, the components for, um, for the rail industry, say, or, or the wind turbine in, in industry, you know, you, you've, you've got quite, quite a distance between some of these bores and you've got temperature variations in the shop sometimes. You've got temperature variations within your machine, depending on your machining processes. So we take what is already a very accurate industry level machine and we take it to the next level up by doing certain things within the machine that I'm not gonna give away on this movie, but we, we gain an extra two, three, four microns per axis in some cases when we're, when we're looking at those, um, those, those bore positions. And if some, of these, if, if some of these parts are extremely large, they'd might go on a different type of machine. Would that ultra precision package be applied across all of the, the technologies sure. that you, you offer? So the same options in the ultra precision package are offered in different sizes of machines. But on the large machines, for example, you may have a traversing spindle, a quill to get right down inside a board. Which we've seen on one of the uh, machines at Emo, in fact, wasn't it? Which gives you that extra extension, doesn't it? Which is a secure extension but to get into areas it, it, it is and we, we, we start with a, a a size of machine that that's that, that's quite small compared to, to the rest of the market so we, we, we see the benefits of having that traversing spindle and of course that spindle is available then on, on the larger machines as well and, and you're running automation in line with a lot of these projects as well and a lot of these parts because again it's it, it's in sectors that require productivity Always. I mean, all, all the machines that we offer from the Hecate range, for example, are all twin pallets. So there's an automation element anyway, but often they're then coupled up with a, a pallet type system um, so, so that there's seamless flow of production through the shop. 